Go ahead and upgrade this to a commercial. Engine 69, engine 96, engine 94, ladder 91, net 95, and Graham all station alert. Channel Bravo 6, commercial structure fire. You're screaming in the background, smoke alarm sounding. You have to pull up the ceiling. I think we need to get our crews out. That scene of a small one story house. We have defensive fire conditions. 1094 establishing Canyon Command. Still an offensive strategy, 010. Multiple reports of a tractor on fire. That scene of a fast moving brush fire, undetermined size at this time. Battalion 94 and Engine 94 has seen small single story residents. We got a working fire. Smoke from Alpha and Charlie. Engine 95, level 1, at the hydrant. Hello everyone, I'm Pat Dale, your fire chief here at Grand Fire and Rescue. Welcome today on this beautiful sunny afternoon to Station 91 for our virtual open house. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of our citizens for our warm support that we so much enjoy here at Grand Fire and Rescue by having nice apparatus, fire stations, and generally supported by our citizens and community. Today we're opening up your fire station, Station 91, here for an open house. Virtual as it is, last year we held an open house here in person. As you know, with the pandemic this year, we're not able to hold an in-person open house, so we're doing it virtually. I'd like to remind everybody to, to make comments, send us comments, letting, letting us know that you're joining us, send questions our way anytime during this open house. And also, I'd like to at, invite everyone to stay all the way to the end. You're going to meet your firefighters today in your station. Remind everyone to stay all the way to the end and meet three very special members of Grand Fire and Rescue. So let's get this started. I'm going to introduce Captain Dave Henson to get the station tour underway. Thanks for joining us. Hi, I'm Captain David Henson. I'm the Station 91 Captain here at Grand Fire and Rescue. Uh, station 91 is our oldest station. It was built in 1986 and it's fully staffed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year with three firefighters on the ladder truck, a paramedic and an EMT on the medic unit and we also house a water tender that carries 3,000 gallons of water for those areas of our fire district that don't have fire hydrants. Um, last year in 2019, uh, the, the Station 91 ran just a little over 2,300 calls for service. Uh, Station 91 is known as the Workhorse, that's our uh, motto, and uh, we got that name because we run a lot of calls out of the station, so they call us the Workhorse. And uh, so we're going to take a tour of the station, please stand by. We're going to talk about the medic unit and the fire, uh, the ladder truck here in a little bit. So hang out and we'll show you all that stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at the station and we'll meet some other admin people that work here um, out of station. Number one. So let's see what they're up to. Hi, Chief Black. Hey, Cap. Say hi to everybody out there watching our virtual uh, hi, fire station tour. everybody. How's it going? My name's Matt Black. I'm with the training division. Here at Station 1, we house our command, which is an area where we can get everybody together and do virtual fires without burning down houses. Uh, we also have a classroom, uh, our fit testing equipment, and a bunch of other cool things. I wish I could show you, but due to uh, the COVID, we're not, we're not letting any, anyone else in the building. So I'm going to turn it back over to Captain Henson. Thanks for letting me say hi. Thank you, Chief Flack. 
All right, let's walk this way. We're going to take a little walk through the fire station. See some of the rigs real quick. Uh, make sure you stay with us so we can see uh, really in depth what those look like. Here's our medic in it. Here's the ladder truck. And along with the tender that we talked about is over there. We'll take a look at that later. And uh, now we're going to talk to Brianna, and she's got some important things to say. Hi, so I'm Brianna Keeley, the Community Outreach Officer at Grand Fire and Rescue. Put my title up there on the screen. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about the community outreach programs that we're running. So currently, if it wasn't COVID-19 times, we would be out in the schools talking to the kids, presenting, stop, drop, and roll, talking to HOAs, etc. Um, because of COVID, we've had to switch to this digital age, so that's why we're having this virtual open house and station tour. Um, it is fire prevention week, so one of the things that we are doing this week that's really cool is that we're partnering with the Graham Dominoes for smoke detector awareness. So tomorrow and Thursday from 1 to 5, we're going to be working with Dominoes. If you have a working smoke alarm, Domino's is going to give you a free pizza certificate. If you don't, our firefighters are going to install one for you. We actually have a short promo video that we're going to play for you here so you can learn a little bit more about that program. So stay tuned. <laughs> It's Fire Prevention Week, and we're excited to team up with Graham Fire and Rescue. Have you tested your smoke detector recently? Your firefighters will be delivering with Domino's on Wednesday and Thursday from 1 to 5 p.m. If you have a working smoke detector, your next pizza's on us. If you do not, we'll install a new one for free. As always, your safety is our priority. All right, so welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and we hope you guys participate in that program with us. One thing I wanted to mention is this learning fire safety packet that we have available for download on our website. Go to gramfire.org, www.gramfire.org. Under the education and outreach sec section, this fire packet is available for download. It's great for elementary age students, teaching them about fire and life safety. So while we're here, we're actually gonna do a quick demo, one very important, thing for children to know about fire safety. So Sparky, our friend here, is gonna help us out. We're gonna teach kids how to stop, drop, and roll. So kids, if your clothes ever catch fire, this is what you need to do. So Sparky's gonna demonstrate. We're gonna stop what we're doing, we're gonna drop to the ground, we're gonna cover our face, and we're gonna roll until the flames are completely extinguished. Maybe we'll have Sparky do that one more time. All right, Sparky, stop what you're doing, drop to the ground. <laughs> Cover your face and roll. Awesome. All right, so thank you, Sparky. I'm gonna pass this back off to Chief Dale and he's gonna give you a quick presentation about um, something currently happening in our district. Thank you. Thanks, Brianna. Great job. So there's something that uh, on a little bit of a serious note, we'd like to let everybody know that we're going to be on the November 3rd ballot with a proposition. One. Just a few quick facts about Prop 1 on the November 3rd Five facts. There's a lot of information about this ballot measure and it's the benefit charge on our website and also Graham Fire benefit charge email uh, that you can find on our website. So five fast facts about the benefit charge. First of all, it's a fee not a tax. It's a fee that's based on size of structure, so square footage, and the occupancy and use of the structure. Again, not a tax. It's a fee based on square footage and occupancy use. So it also, secondly, shifts the cost from residential to properties that have a bigger draw on fire resource, the reason why we exist, and that's multifamily and commercial. So. If we were on the benefit charge in 2020, everybody that's residential in our district would go down what they contribute for fire protection. Multifamily and commercial go up 
in varying levels depending on square footage and the occupancy use. Third, it increases stability and sustainability. Stability in, a, in that again, it's not based on, a, it's not a tax based on assessed value. It's a fee that's more reasonably apportioned to the size of structure in use. So it's not reliant on assessed property value such as a tax. Sustainable because it's a six year voter approved Proposition 1 that upon renewal can be made permanent and provides sustainability. Fourth, it has standard exemptions and deductions just like very similar to taxation of properties. And lastly, number five, if voted yes by the, our voters on November 3rd, it will replace the four-year maintenance and operations levy for the final two years. So we'll switch over to the benefit charge away from the extra tax of the maintenance and operations levy. If you have questions about your specific property and what it would do to your property if on the benefit charge, visit www.gramfire.org or email benefitcharge at gramfire.org. Thank you for listening to five fast facts about the benefit charge. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to Captain Henson to show you the rest of Station 91. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it and great job, Brianna. Virtual clap. All right, let's go. We'll check out the rest of the fire station. Try to keep up. All right, we're gonna head up the stairs, go up to the living quarters where most of the firefighters hang out on, on their downtime after productive work hours. All right, people, this is our day room. This is where we uh, spend our downtime during breaks, lunch, dinner, and uh, after productive work hours and stuff. And sometimes we need to take a little nap. Nap, nominal activity plan. As you can see, one of our firefighters right now is taking advantage of that. So just be quiet. Shh. All right. Over here, we've got our kitchen. And as you can see, we've got three, well, four refrigerators. Three for each shift, A, B, and C. The one on the far left is the community fridge where we keep our condiments. So you can look around here. We've got several stoves and stuff like that. Hi, Spark. Sorry, you know better. <laughs> thank you, Sparky. Well, thank you, Sparky, for doing that. One of the fire safety things we like to point out is one of the leading causes of uh, kitchen fires is unattended cooking. So, Bill, taking a nap, left something on the stove. Thankfully, Sparky was here to save us. All right, let's continue over where we do all our work. There we go. There we go. Over here is what they call the firefighter office. They have all their computers and stuff for doing their reports, training, things of that nature. And there's firefighter Kirk Lee, hired at work. Say hi. Good job. Good job. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Over here, we'll go take a look at our workout room. You gotta stay in good shape. And here's where we work out. Here's our got a pretty uh, decent setup. There's Firefighter Daly doing his workout. Good job. How you feeling? Great. Awesome. Sparky did his work. Okay, let's go downstairs. Now we're going to head downstairs and go back out into the apparatus bay and we'll take a look at the medic unit in the ladder truck. So here we are. Here's paramedic Joe Sink. He's going to take you on a little tour of the, the medic unit and talk to you about that. 
Hi, I'm Joe Sait. I'm a paramedic here at Station 91. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the medic unit. So up here in the front, we've got a mobile computer we talk to our dispatch with. Uh, they can give, a, give us information on calls, and uh, we can use the, the map function too to find houses. So moving back this way. In this compartment, uh, firefighters store gear, got our air tanks for fires, some water, and just some other little miscellaneous equipment. So moving on back. Generally, this is where the paramedic keeps his, his gear, his breathing apparatus, uh, some hand tools, and we also carry extra smoke detectors with batteries that we can uh, install and replace at people's houses. Moving around. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have an all gurney that we acquired uh, with a grant. Uh, it improves patient safety and uh, prevents firefighter injury. Let's move on. Department. Uh, we've got oxygen backboards for um, from different cities. Small compartment, we've got uh, life jackets we can use, as well as a bag for mass casualty. And now I'll show you the back. So starting back bunch of bandaging equipment for burns and trauma patients. Down here we have our own personal protective equipment that everyone's heard about. Kit, so we can deliver. Up here we've got uh, all the equipment for respiratory patients and oxygen delivery. Moving back, I'll switch the sides there. We've got extra IV equipment and advanced airways. Um, also, I'm going to show you our Life Pack 15. Uh, I'm going to hook up Firefighter Kirkley here. Uh, this machine can take your vital signs, as a few other things. This uh, people's heart rhythm. Also, during cardiac. To, to provide electricity. showed up on there and there's plenty of we can tell from that. It's heart rate, if it's abnormal and things we can do if it is. So back here we've got all our IV equipment and medications. So everything in this tray we can use to get IV access uh, to give the patient medication and IV fluids. We also have a tray of medications for allergic reactions, cardiac issues, breathing problems, a number of things. We also have everything condensed down into different bags so that we can bring it to the patient in their house or wherever they might be. So in this yellow box, it's our airway box. And we are an advanced life uh, Unit so we can provide advanced airways with uh, endotracheal intubation. As well as direct, uh, rather, video. So this would attach to a laryngoscope and we could use it 
to place the breathing tube. In the orange bin, it's even more medications and everything we need to start an IV. So we can treat cardiac rhythms, breathing problems, allergic reactions, anything emergent we can do out in the field. So that's about it for the medic unit. I'm going to pass you back to Captain Henson. Firefighter Kirkley for a great tour of the medic unit. Boy, wasn't that awesome. So we're going to continue our tour of the station and oh, what do we have? It's a little impromptu competition between Chief Dale and Firefighter Paramedic LaRue putting on their bunker gear. Who do you think's going to win? All right, guys. When I say go, you go. All right. All right. On your marks, get set. <laughs> Set. Come on, Chief. Go. Oh, and for our viewers at home, if you want to be a little bit, react with a heart. If you want Firefighter LaRue to win, react with a light. Go, Chief. Go, Chief. All right. Oh, Jack Lover. Close. Oh, that's fast. <laughs> when was the last time I had this on? <laughs> Start with the pilot. Tour is going to take longer today. Here we go. Firefighter Lou oh. won. You got, you got some critical fails here in your bunker gear. Yeah. We double check each other, other before we go into fire. Yes. Things like that. Failed Good job, guys. Thanks. Good job, Larue. Thanks, Cap. Thanks, Chief. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we wear a bunker coat, bunker jacket. It's got some thermal protection, vapor barriers, and things like that because steam is actually one of the things that cause us the most burns. Um, so we need to make sure that we don't have any skin showing. Collars are all nice and tight, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, nice skin showing. Bunker <laughs> boots made out of leather. Anything else we need to talk about bunker gear? These really cool helmets. All right. All right, let's go look at the fire truck. The ladder truck, sorry. So firefighter Coates, my driver today, was set up for us so we could get to take a look at what it looks like when it's all set up. Outriggers are out. As you can see, the aerial is up in the air, and we climb it, and it's been rescue just in case. Some of my firefighter buddies out there will understand what that means. All right, let's take a look inside here. This is where the driver sits. <laughs> All right, here's where the firefighters sit call this riding backwards even though they don't ride backwards anymore that's old school you see we carry lots of equipment axes fire extinguisher the pump panel this is where the driver actually controls how much water comes in and comes out and supplies the hose lines for uh, 
attacking the fire, we've got inch and three quarter per cadet can lines, another thing called a bulk load, horizontal standpipe. Over here, we've got the um, uh, engineer's compartment or brass compartment. Sometimes this is where the engineer gets all his uh, appliances and adapters and tools in order to build certain hose lays and things of that nature, or if we need extra stuff. Tool board where we carry our axes and the Halligan bars, which actually swings out. And then we've got our wildland gear, RIT. This is called a RIT bag. Other tools up on the tool board. <laughs> we carry a complement of different saws for cutting things open. We carry two chainsaws with a really fancy carbide tip right there. And we also carry a circular saw that's designed to cut more metal and concrete things. Chainsaws more for wood. Let's go around this. Here's our cribbing bags, pieces of wood that we use to shore up different uh, things, car accidents, uh, collapse, rescues, stuff of that nature. Let's go back here. Because we are a ladder truck, we carry more ladders than a fire engine. Here's our complement of ladders. We've got a 35 foot ladder, 16 foot, 18 foot, and a 28 foot extension ladder. Rubbish hooks, pipe poles, these are called pulling tools. That's what we use to open up things to find hidden fire. And here, this is our supply line. It's a five inch supply line. That's what we hook to the hydrant and then to the pump of the apparatus. Hmm? And we carry uh, 500 gallons of water on, in a tank. It's called a booster tank. So we have water to use before we hook up to a fire hydrant. Here's what we call our hydrant box. This is what we use to hook stuff up to the hydrant. Different adapters because some of our hydrants have different uh, setups as far as how you hook it up and things like that. Water manifold, uh, that's for delivering water to different uh, hand lines or getting water supply back to the ladder. Let's go this way. More equipment, our uh, low angle rescue bag. This is for doing some rope at rescue if we're on a slope or things like that. We also carry just normal tools like uh, um, drills and sawzalls, things of that nature. Here's a throw rope for water rescue in case we need to throw uh, water uh, rope out to people that are having problems in the water and weren't wearing their, uh, you know, life vest. So here's our extrication compartment. This is mainly where we carry all of our stuff for um, extricating people out of uh, certain situations where they may be trapped. Mostly car accidents. Probably heard them called the jaws of life. Spreaders. They're powered by a hydraulic pump right here. Different hoses that control that. We also got airbags for lifting uh, heavy pieces of uh, stuff off of people in case we need to do that. Positive pressure fan. This is what we use to blow smoke out of the um, houses or buildings. Um, once we're done uh, controlling the fire and things of that nature, remove the smoke. Again, we got some more hookup areas on, on the pump panel on the officer side of the rig. Hand lines to pull for fire control. Inch and three quarter pre-connects is what they're called. They're pre-connected to the engine or the ladder truck already because, and they just, uh, we don't have to hook them up to the valves that are already here and discharge folks. What do we got in here? Fire extinguisher axe, some wheel chocks. And this is where firefighters ride on the officer side. And uh, that's my bunker gear right there, ready to go, just in case. There's an emergency. And this is the officer seat. So this is where the officer will sit in responses. And we'll talk about the MDC, this computer here. This is how we get our dispatches and information. We can tell the dispatch center when we're in route, at scene, in service, stuff like that. Um, it will give us information. We can also look up other things called pre-fire plans and get information for building commercial structures that we may be going to that are on fire. We know how to locate different things like gas shut off, water shut off, um, electrical uh, control panels, sprinkler rooms stuff like that. Look at the front. 
And here's the front. And just more hose lines. Just in case. Like where we normally carry. Another inch and three quarter pre-connector. We also got it wide off to a one inch line. We use a lot of this for small brush fires, trash fires, dumpster fires, things like that. All right. And there's, we'll talk about the aerial. That's the aerial fully extended. It's got a waterway in it where we can pump water out of that nozzle at the end. And there's uh, one of our firefighters, firefighter LaRue, climbing the aerial ladder. Say hi. Hey. All right, good job. All right. I think now we're going to go over and talk to Chief or no, we're going to go look at the fire the, the water tender. I think uh, firefighter uh Kirkley's got a tour of the 3000 gallon water tender and what that's all about. Here's our 3000 gallon water tender. Holds well, 3000 gallons of water. And Firefighter Kirkley is going to come over and talk to you about the water tender. This is our, uh, my name is Firefighter Kirkley. Uh, this is our 2001 uh, tender. It's from Pierce. It holds 3,000 gallons. Uh, it pumps 1,250 gallons a minute. Uh, in here, we have some basic tools uh, for attaching hose lines and pumping water to other engines on fires and things of that nature. We also use a lot on the uh, wildfire that we had in Congo. These compartments hold more air bottles. There's four of them on the rig. This compartment holds more hose. And here we have a generator for lights, in case when you see it's nighttime. Uh, this here is for our dump tank, which is mounted on the right side of the rig. It'll be placed behind it, and there is a valve that will um, um, let out all 3,000 gallons at the same time. On this side, we have a strainer. Uh, one floats and one sinks, depending on our options. And if there's sediment at the bottom of a pond or something like that, we can use the one that floats. And if we're somewhere else, like a pool or something, like a lake, where there's no sediment, we can use the other option or a dump tank. And over here, we have more air packs. And our wildland packs. And this is our smoke detector kit, in case we need to change smoke detectors while we're out in the tender. So we're always prepared for that. Here we have more pre-connects for hose lines. This also can operate as a fire engine, in this case where it has uh, two inch and three quarters and bulk load of two and a half. In the cab, it'll fit two people. We have a laptop so you can see where we're going and which call we're going to. And that's about it for the tender. And I'll pass you back off to Captain Henson. Thank you, Firefighter Kirkley. Great job. All right, let's continue our station tour. Let's go this way and see what is going on. Hey, well, what, what do you know? We have another friendly competition. On, yeah, baby, we're very competitive go. people. Let's see who can roll that hose off the straightest. Ready, guys? Ready. On go. Ready, set, go. Oh, woo! Pretty good. What do you think, guys? Who won? Who's got the straightest one? Yeah, it's pretty tight, tight. <laughs> All right, let's continue our uh, walk around the station where we're going to go see Chief Dale again, and he's going to have another important message for you. Hi, Chief Dale. Uh, hi, Captain Henson. Thank you. Nice You're job welcome. on your tour. Having some fun with the firefighters. Absolutely. Today I'm going to read some kids firehouse book. Please join me everybody. Today to our kids we're gonna read Clifford the firehouse dog. Please join me. Okay, my name is Elizabeth and this is my dog Clifford. Clifford is not the oldest in his family but he is the biggest. Last week, Clifford and I went to the city to visit Clifford's brother, Nero. Clifford knew the way. Nero lives in a firehouse, like our firehouse station 91. He is a fire rescue dog. 
I asked the firefighters if Clifford could help them. They thought he was the right color for the job. Just then a group of school children came in for a fire safety class. Kids, have you ever been to a fire safety class before? We gave some firefighters a ride back to the firehouse. Clifford was a hero. The fire chief made him an honorary fire rescue dog, just like his brother Nero. The end. Thank you for paying such good attention, kids. We'd like to introduce you to Drip, Torch, and Frankie, our firehouse goats. Say hi to Drip, Torch, and Frankie. Interestingly with our goats, we got our goats because our firefighters take care of lawns and keep it, have to keep them mowed. So some of our firefighters got Drip, Torch, and Frankie to help keep the, the grass down in about an acre to 96. The way I'd like everybody to know that Drip, Torch, and Frankie really serve as emotional support goats because our firefighters often see scenes of of trouble and, and their difficult calls and our firefighters come back and spend some time with Drip, Torch and Frankie feeding and petting them, their behavioral support goats. Nice that you got to meet Drip, Torch and Frankie. I'm going to turn it back over to Captain Henson. Well thank you again Chief Dale, that was awesome. So um, what's next? I don't remember. We're going to finish the tour. As you can see, our firefighters are standing around hard at work. Yeah, that's right, standing around hard at work. I said it. So, and then uh, we got another message from Chief Dale to finish up our tour. I'd like to see what he has to say. Chief Dale. All right, thank you, Captain Hansen. You're welcome. So to conclude our station tour here today at Station 91, we want to thank everybody for attending virtually as it is. Hopefully next year we can welcome everybody back at this time for an in-person open house. Again, as your fire chief, I'd like to thank everybody in our community, our citizens, for your warm and generous support that you often show to your firefighters and your fire department here at Grand Fire and Rescue by providing us the nice stations that we have, the apparatus, the staffing that we currently have. We want to thank everybody for your support and thank you for tuning in today. Hope to see you next year. As always, your safety is our priority.